we're uh, we're live. Um, William, yes sir. We we got a special guest here today. Uh, welcome everyone to the Creative Block. This is our very first episode with video. Um, so, been in the, doing a podcast now for almost a year, and it's uh, it's gone to the point now where I want to start incorporating video. I feel like. I want to put my face out there more and also be able to, you know, just have more content to share. You know, we're, we're in a content game and, you know, it's uh, in, in the world that we're in today. Like it, I, I feel like I'm doing myself a disservice and my uh, listeners and viewers a disservice by right. not giving them as many outlets as possible to, you know, get a taste of the podcast and, and, uh, and here. So I know we, we've been we've been talking for a minute trying to get you on. Yeah, I'm grateful to have you on. Yeah, William Fairbanks. So. Um, Another fellow creative here hey. from the Central Ohio. Um, you tell the guests, you know, who you are and, and what you do. Kind of give a little brief intro. I, yeah. I, and I guess uh, for you know, for the record, you got some sippy sip. Yeah, man. For the record, I got my little sippy sip here. I'm I'm sipping on some um, bourbon. It's it's nice and smooth. Um, bullet, you know, it does it does me good. Um, but yeah, man, Lewis, thank you for having me, bro. It's been a minute. Um, we started talking. It had been like at least a month and a half, two months ago. Yeah. Almost three months ago. Well, I, no, so it's been longer than that because I, I remember like when I started, uh, once I conceptualized the podcast, right. and wanted to uh, started started putting together a guest list of people that I wanted to talk to. Like you were, you've always been on that list. So Dang. I started a podcast back in January. So it's been Dang. almost a year, and like I, I think I, I think I reached out to you like back in March. Mm-hmm. But like back in January, I knew that I you were you were gonna be one of the guests. Right, we could check the receipts, but I'm definitely <laughs> um. I'm I'm definitely blessed and humbled to be here, man. Like for real, thank you for it's having me. Um, just like you wanted to have me on here, I've wanted to be on here. So I'm glad that we were able to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? And, so. and I appreciate that, man. And it's, uh, it's all love from here as well. All love. So, you know, uh, whenever we bring on guests, uh, we just kind of run through a little brief intro: mm-hmm. who you are, what you do. Um, as you know, Creative Block uh, is a podcast for creatives mm-hmm. who are, you know. In, in different stages of their journey. And, and one of the goals for me is to have conversations with fellow creatives that are in different stages of their journey as right. well. Uh, and, and just, you know, talk about things, talk about their journey. They'll talk about things that they're going through, things that they have gone through. Right. And, 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 and ho- in hope of, of being able to communicate that to an up and coming creative that may be struggling through you know, going through a certain thing right. that, you know, that you have gone through and, and being able to just to have a conversation and like, it's, it's been very fruitful. And like, I, I definitely want to like hone in on those things that make everyone unique because I feel, uh, especially a lot of artists coming up that they feel like they're on their own, they're in their own little silo and they're struggling on their own. And I, I want to be letting it be known that there's a community out there and that you could reach out to people and, you know, we're all we're all in this together. We're all in it together. Yeah. Um, real quick, um, I'm Will Fairbanks, William Fairbanks. Um, I come from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, I'm a filmmaker by trade. That's what I do. I'm a writer. Um, I got my degree over at Ohio Wesleyan University. Um, I studied. I gotta stop saying um um um. My mama told me that when I was younger. She was like, "Why stop saying um all the time?" You know what I'm saying? But no, I got my degree over at Ohio Wesleyan where I studied filmmaking and creative writing. Ever since then, I got my degree. I'm an unconventional student. We can get into that a little bit later. But I got my degree in that, and I've been shooting for the past, like, year and a half to two years. Um, so I'm kind of fresh to this. But, okay. you know, we moving. We doing, we're we doing very well. God's very good. So so yeah. that, that's awesome. So it's, it's – uh, have you always had a background in, like, writing or in the, in the arts? Or what was that like coming up? Um, Definitely. I've always had that creative gene in me. I've always wanted to make things. I've always wanted to tell stories. I've always had that imaginative mind where I was thinking outside the box, coloring outside the lines. That's always been me. I've always thought about um, the what if or what could be kind of things. Um, I come from public housing, so I was always dreaming of like, making it out in the bigger thing. Like, that's always been in my mind. And not just the typical, oh, let's just blow up and get a big mansion and, you know what I'm saying, babies everywhere, cars everywhere. Like, nah, that was never it. It was more so like, all right, 
what's a story outside of here? You know, I was always dreaming. Like, I always used to think in elementary school, just to give you, like, a microcosm, in elementary school, we had this big field, right? And I'm in, like, third grade, second grade, and I used to think that, like, Wonderland was, like, beyond the field, you know? Like, that was my mind. So I've always been creating. I've always been writing. Um, I've always been interested in music and just, like, the arts. So, yeah. And it was just recently where I was just like, all right, cool. I'm going to channel all these different talents, all these different gifts into filmmaking. So I guess, like, I have a lot of questions with that. But, like, something that stood out is, like, you know, like you said, came up from, like, public housing. I I grew up in Puerto Rico. In the so you know what of Puerto it is. Rico. Well, I, could, I shouldn't just so. assume. Like, I'm from Puerto Rico. Oh, damn, you're from the streets. <laughs> like. So it's, uh, it, it, it's very interesting because, uh, um, you know, as, as you know, you know, the – Growing up in an environment like that mm -hmm. in the streets, uh, per se, that it's uh, we're not really afforded a lot of options. A lot right. of the times it's like, you know, you get caught up in the street or you either get caught up in that street game or you, you know, are an athlete. Right. Or you end line. up making or you end up making it as a musician or as a right. creative. And uh, for me, like it's it's very interesting because I mean, as I've talked with um, other people on the podcast and and even Ross, who shout out to Ross, who shout you were a guest on his podcast. When we talked on my pod, uh, when I was on that episode uh, with him, uh, we talked about you know growing up. Like I, literally, you know, like my brother got caught up in the streets. So mm. like it's a lot of time. Like my my family ended up uprooting from Puerto Rico because of a lot of the stuff that my brother got caught in. Right. It was like we got to uh, get out of here. So it is it, very interesting. Like you know. Being able to have that conversation that I, I think a lot of people like coming up that it's you really are not given a lot of options. And, right. and, and for me, I felt like I channeled a lot of my energy with like sports, and, like creative, drawing, music, mm -hmm. film. And, and for me, that th those were outlets for me. And like I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to God that like I'm not I didn't get caught up in that. Right. And I was able to kind of get out of that. Right. And like I'm, I'm still trying to make it, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get that big house and all that. But it's, I, I'm, I'm grateful that I, it's, it's allowed me to be in a position that I'm in right now right. in my life, and, and knowing friends, families, relatives that uh, weren't able to, you know, to get out of that, get right. out of that world. So okay, talk it's, about that a little bit. It's beautiful, you know, when you think about it. How like I heard you say how you're still working on getting the big house, right? But it's amazing how far you've come, right? When you sit back and you think about the people that came before you. I remember back in the summer, my uncle called me. And, you know, I'm not living in a huge house, you know what I'm saying? Or anything of that nature. But I have my own, like I have my own car. I got a two-bedroom apartment. You know, I've got my own cell phone. I'm taking care of myself, right? And he was just like, yo... I'm so proud of you because I couldn't imagine being where you are at your age, right? And I'm like, what? Like, dang, Unc, like, I'm nowhere. Like, what are you talking about? But when you sit back and you think about it, you know, um, a lot of people don't make it out of those situations. Like you said, the people your family before you, a lot of them are stuck in that cycle, stuck in those chains. And to even make a little progress, like me and my brother are first generation, you know what I'm saying, to go to college and get our degrees. Right. My brother right above me. Shout out Stefan. I love you, Lamont. You're doing great. But not like. Um, Sorry to interrupt. My brother's name is Stefan. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, that's what's up. Shout out Stefan. Shout out both Stefans. We right. see y'all. But um, yeah, to answer your question, um, I come from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I grew up in North Maple Village. Shout out to Ville Boys. Um, it's called the Ville, North Maple, um, 723 North Maple. That's where I'm from. 734 stand up. But, you know, it's kind of crazy because I'm from Ann Arbor, right? And when I tell people I'm from, I'm from Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor's college town. Yeah. They're like, oh, wait, you're not from the hood. What are you talking about? I'm like, bro, you'd be surprised. You know what I'm saying? I've seen things. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm definitely blessed to have been able to make it out of that. My mother raised me and my brothers. I have five brothers. Um, she raised us by herself by herself, um, working three, four jobs, doing what she had to do. Um, she encouraged me to be the best me from a lad, you know, from a little lad. She always told me that I could do whatever I wanted, and she meant it. 
Um, she always poured into me God's word. She always poured into me God's purpose for my life and encouraged me in that sense. So I'm, I'm very lucky, you know, because I have friends who didn't make it out, like who are my age, right? And are in jail or have a bunch of kids. And there's nothing wrong with having a bunch of kids, but at the same time, like having kids at a very, very young age, you know what I'm saying? And and being in the not being in the position or not even have the, the psyche to know how to take care of their children. You know what I'm saying? And getting caught up in the drug game, um, selling drugs, being in and out of jail. So that could have been me. You know what I'm saying? I'm just what four steps away from it. You know, my stoop, whatever. I'm four steps away from that. Right. You know, so I'm definitely um, walking in grace even to this day, you know, because there's other situations outside of the hood that could have shortened my my potential or dropped my potential. But I was able to navigate by the grace of God. And, I mean, we here and we're doing great things, you know. And what do you feel were those things that allowed you to navigate? Um, definitely, my, I would say definitely my family. Um, I come from a creative family. You know, my older brother does, he's an artist, he does drawing. You know, um, he's a visual artist in that sense. He's a painter, illustrator. Um, he has his own clothing line. He's a tattoo artist. And then my brother under him, video games. Um, he went to the Army. He's in the tech, things of that nature. The brother below him, Stefan, preacher, in the sense that same creative, because you have to be creative in your message. You have to be captivating. You have to be able to tell a story. You have to be able to relate to your audience, which is the congregation. So another creative gene. Then you got me, you know what I'm saying? And I'm doing music, started off in music, and now it's transitioned over to um, filmmaking and narrative work and storytelling. Then I have my little brother who does podcasts. He also is learning the guitar, things of that nature. So I come from a family that we all have these different talents. We all have these different potentials. And we've always been artistic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my mother used to draw. My mother, my, my grandmother is a seamstress. You know what I'm saying? She just made me this dope jacket. I'm going to show y'all in a few months. Wait for it. It's coming. But no, like she just made me like a dope jacket. So it's always been in me. So there's that. And then at the same time, while we have that artistic side, we're also very stern, right? My mother like was a no-nonsense kind of woman. She had to be because she's raising all men, right? So um, a lot of people who are in that situation, single mothers have issues raising boys, right? And yeah. bringing up to men. At some point, they start to get um, rebellious. At some point, they start, you know, they need their fathers, right? So my mother wasn't on that. She's like, yo, y'all going to... And it was the grace of God, you know what I'm saying? Um, first and foremost, it was the grace of God. Then it was all those other things, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And she was just able to to point us in the right, right direction and and make sure that she encouraged us first and foremost to understand that we could do anything, right? That was the biggest thing in my, in, I think in my mom's repertoire. She was like, yo, you can do whatever you want. She would always say, and she still says it. She's like, fly, birdie, fly. Like that's her, that's her motto. If I was to get a tattoo, which I probably won't ever get a tattoo, but if I was to get a tattoo, it would be fly, birdie, fly, right? Because it, 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 it encompasses my mother's message to me, you know? So with all those different things and, you know, God's grace, I, I, I've come across some great mentors, you know, um, there's a community center out in Ann Arbor, Peace Neighborhood Center. They took me under their wing. Shout out to Bonnie, shout out to Paul. They definitely brought me up, saw potential in me, helped me to get to where I'm at today. They're the ones who drove me down to college. You know what I'm saying? So I've just been really blessed because like I was telling you, I was four steps, you know, I was the stoop away from going into the deep end or making the wrong decision that would get me locked up. And I've been in situations where I shouldn't be here or I should be locked up. So, you know, it's it's a mixture of things. And has faith always played a big role in that? Or is that something that you kind of came upon as you got older? Um, no, nah, faith has always been there. I'm that boy who is like, my mom's like, y'all getting up and going to church. You know, even when my mother was... I'm with my pops, and my pops were staying at the crib. Some days my pops would stay home, and I'd be like, oh, you stay home with my dad. My mom's like, no, you better get up. You go to church. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And even at church, right, if you think about it, I come from public housing. I come from the hood, right? The people at my church, 
doctors, um, um, car lot owners, you know, um, car dealership owners, dentists, you know, these people who are functioning on a high level in society, right? A lot of them white, most of them white, all of them white, not all of them, but you know what I'm saying? Shout out to brother and sister Adarosia, definitely African, love them to death. They held it down, learned so much from them, professors doing great things. Um, but being around that, you know what I'm saying? Like little things, right? So me being from the hood, I had like a street charisma to me, right? I knew how to talk to people from the hood. I know how to joke. I know how to make people smile. I know how to be myself, joyful, God-given joy, right? But then at the same time, being around these white people at my church all the time, I'm talking every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Sunday, I'm with them a lot, right? Because my mother's like, you're not about to be in the streets. You're going to be at church all the time. And I was able to develop um, how to move within that circle. You know what I'm saying? Being a chameleon. Being able, not so so much to be able to throw on a mask, but knowing how to operate around these different things. So while faith has always, you know, faith is a is a is a is an odd thing. It's an interesting thing, right? Because my faith is what allowed me to learn how to operate within different circles. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't necessarily me praying, Jesus, please bring me to a certain situation, even though that is the case. It was also me just being in around faith people, you know what I'm saying? And I'm in church all the time, and now I'm developing relationships and friendships with, you know, these little rich white boys, you know what I'm saying, who love me to death, you know what I'm saying? And at some point, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference that I was from the hood and they were from the burbs, but I was able to learn so much from them. So, yes, faith has played a huge part in my life. God is my everything. He is the reason why I'm here. He's my rock. So I digress. No, it, 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 the reason I ask is because it's uh, a lot of people in, in my circle and in my life, mm -hmm. um, you know, faith plays a large role. And it's, you know, I grew up similar. It's funny listening to you talk about, you know, growing up with your mom, you know, my mom raises, I'm the oldest of six. Right. My mom raises Ooh, by herself. Of six. Um, and so it's, we have, I have three sisters and another brother and it's, uh, you know, it was a challenge, man. And like, it's, I never realized until I started having kids of my own mm -hmm. and started my own family, how difficult it, it was for my mother, not only trying to provide for us, but also having to deal with all the different personalities and all the right. quirks and, and, and everything that comes with being a parent. Do you have um, another half? today yeah yes. like with your with yes, your kids yes 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 so it's it's and, and it's, it's hard for you now yes. so just imagine your mom's so you know that working three four jobs mm -hmm. dad isn't around um you know my father like i i have like i i don't have any any beef with him or any qualms but he was never really around when right. i was growing up i understand um so like our relationship hasn't really it, it really didn't develop a whole lot until you know, I got older mm -hmm. and, you know, he wasn't really around. So especially like the teenagers were rough for me because I'm like trying to help my mom, you know, trying to be the man. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what, that's, 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 that's what I felt. And like it, it, it was tough. So it's, uh, you know, that's one of the things that we kind of, uh, I guess leaned on was, you know, it was the faith going to church, having right. like that support system to, um, you know, to have hope that, you know, things can't get better and Fact. things are happening for a reason. Fact. So that's why, that's why I ask. And like in, in today, it's, I still think it, it plays a large role in, into, it played a large role into who I am and it's, I'm, I'm here because of faith. So it's, right. it's, it's always interesting to hear, you know, different people's perspective on that. Um, because I feel like it's been a common thread for a lot of people that right. there is a, there, it has played a role in their life. And a lot of people I think have had a lot of positive come out, come from that. Fact, fact, um, fact. So as, as you're growing up, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're going to church, you, you kind of have uh, these different outlets. How, how were you, you know, as you were growing up, what, how were you applying like the whole creative aspect? Um, so I was, it started off in music. That was my main outlet. Um, and it was music and basketball, but I wasn't. Like, I had no one come before me to show me, like, how to go down the basketball lane. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like when I have a son, if I have a son, right, and he wants to play ball, I'm going to be able to be like, look, you need to do this, 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 this to become the best basketball player that you can be and make the team, right? For me, I didn't really have that. So why, while I did have raw talent, I'll bust a lot of y'all heads. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> like, while I do have raw talent, I was never in the position to develop that, right? So it was basketball or, like, music. I've always been in love with music from the front gate. And um, I had friends, and I was freestyling all the time, rapping all the time. You know, you put a beat on, we, we, we kicking it. Yeah. And I was always writing songs on my back stoop all the damn time. And my friends would come up on the stoop and they'd be like, Will, what you doing? And I'd be right. And they'd be like, yo, spit something, Will. And I'd spit something. And they'd be like, oh, bro, you're going to be big. And I'd be like, yeah, we're going to be big. We're going to get up out of here, right? And um, that kind of developed into this collective that me and my boy Obi started. It was called Metal Apes. And um, long story short, that imploded. Um, and it didn't become what we thought it was going to be. Um, and through that, I was able to discover, you know, I'm writing all the time. I'm writing musically. But at the same time, I can write stories as well. You know, and my favorite class in, in middle school was um, language arts. And my favorite subject our favorite point of emphasis in elementary was spelling right i've always had this infatuation with words whether it is singing or writing an actual story narrative right because it's like and i still believe it to this day writing lasts you know what i'm saying we're getting to the point where people aren't really reading as much in society but the written word there's so much power in the written word, 100%. right? You can express yourself so well with words, right? And I've always kind of had that gift of gab, you know? I've always been able to get out of trouble, you know, just from talking, hey, oh, what's up, Mrs. Um, Johnson? I'm sorry I'm late, you know? It's crazy yeah. out here, you know? Been able to pitch words, and they're like, okay, go, just go sit down, right? Or, um, you know, getting adoration from people from spitting in a circle in middle school, you know, rapping, oh, Will, you so dope, da 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 right? So you're getting high off these things. And then at some point, those things turned into the group that was Metal Apes that I mentioned. It fell apart. And when it fell apart, I went into a state of depression and isolation. And during that time, I was spending a lot of time praying and meditating. And what came out of that was a novel that I'm working on. It's called Thoughts of Relocation. It's, it's the shorter part of my brand. Um, but it, it started through that, right? And I'm like, all right, cool. How can I use... I started to actually think. This was 2012. I think I was 20. I forget what age I was. Um, it's 2020. So it was then eight years ago. So I was about 22, 21, okay. something like that. And I start thinking, how can I use all of my talents and all my skills to, to how do I channel all these things for one common goal? And then it came out to be film. So it started off in music, then it got to writing. And then it was like, all right, but let me figure out how to use the writing and let me how to figure out how to use the music and let me figure out how to use my eye. To, to, to go after one main thing, and film was the thing. You know, because in film, you have all those different elements. You have the score, you have the soundtrack, then you have the dialogue, you have the script, you have the story, the narrative, the concept, you, and then you have the vision, the cinematography, right? So you have all these different things, and it was like, all right, bet this is where I'm supposed to be, and this is where I'm rocking. And, and what, were, what were, like, those little small things that kind of led you to that? Um, it was... It was definitely, um, it started off with me freestyling, and then it led to me starting a collective called Metal Apes. Right. And in that, you know, um, I kind of took the back seat 
my boy Obi was doing more of the music and I was doing more so of the management, building the brand. Okay. Right? And we were throwing parties, crazy parties in Ann Arbor, crazy parties. Look it up, Metal Apes, wild parties, crazy parties, Ann Arbor. But yeah, so um, we were throwing these things. And then um, I think the main thing for me was heavily music because I was freestyling everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And I was writing all the time on my stoop. Those were the main things that drove me towards film. And then when when Metal Apes fell apart, right, there was this huge falling out, and I went into isolation, that's when it was like, all right, bet, let me figure out what it is that I really want to do. I was in Ann Arbor, but all I could think about was getting out of Ann Arbor. All of my friends had abandoned me in, in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Whether it be my fault or their, whoever, you know what I'm saying? My friends weren't there, so I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, and I just wanted to get out of Ann Arbor. So, and you know, I was spending is, a lot of time solo. Is, is that, I mean, is that something that you could elaborate, like that time period when, when things kind of started falling apart with, with Metal Apes? Yeah, we can definitely talk about that. Um, so, Metal Apes, the whole vision, we started... In North Maple again, where I came up, me and my boy Obi, we would always like make music in my basement. And we would have conversations like, bro, we're about to come up, we're about to blow up, blah, 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 blah. Dreams, we're dreaming big in the basement. A lot of people have that story, right? And so we decided to develop a brand. And it was actually his idea. Metal Apes was his, his um, brainchild. I wanted to do Peep Game, but... I'm always that person that's like, all right, bet, let me work with the squad. Like, what do you want? Whatever I'm a part of, we going to make flare up. Like, it doesn't matter if it's your name, my name, whoever. As long as I'm a part of it, we going to make it flare, right? So we ended up going with Metal Apes. And in the year 2011, 2012, the summer of, we were throwing those crazy parties. Whatever year um, Project X came out. Okay. You remember Project so, so it was one of those parties? Bro, it was <laughs> multiple of those parties, bro. Like, and the way we did it, it was bananas. Like, we made it exclusive. We made it seclusive. We made it secretive, right? So we made these tickets, golden tickets, and we got this stamp. We made it at Office Max. Literally, we got our materials from Office Max. It was like 10 of us in the crew. We had Michigan football players, people that played for the Michigan football team, we had people in high school. We had people in college. Like, the age range was, like, 17 to, like, 23, I think, at the time. And basically, our first initial party, um, we got these tickets made. Because once um, Project X came out, everybody was trying to throw those parties, right? right? And the majority of them were being shut down because everybody was promoting them on social media. Oh, we about to throw this party, Project X, um, wherever. Project X fill in the blank, whatever city, right? The police would be like, oh, you just going to post that shit on there? I bet. We bet. We're going to shut you down. We'll see you about 30. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the way we did it, we we were like, all right, we see everyone else's flaws. We see where y'all falling short. So we made these tickets, and we're like, yo, the only way you get the address is if you buy the ticket. And we, we stamped the ticket on the back. We stamped the address on the back of the ticket, Right. And we we made it where it was like, yo, if we see anything on social media, you don't come. You don't get in. It's shut down. Wow. Right? And people actually listened, right? The first party, we rented out this lake house, like 45 minutes away from Ann Arbor. And it was a success. We sold out. It was sardines. Like, I kid you not, Lou. It was sardines in the building. Like, we were like this in there. And um, we had a DJ on each floor. We had, like, unlimited alcohol. It was just, it was wild. You know what I'm saying? It was college students, high school students, grown people. It was, like, 35-year-olds in there. It was everybody in the building, right? And the first one was a success, you know? No casualties. Everyone lived. Nobody went to jail. You know? Success. So we're like, all right, bet. let's keep doing this. Let's keep doing this. So that summer, we threw like three or four more parties, and they were house parties because Ann Arbor, like when I first said Ann Arbor, the face you gave me, suburbs, right? People with these nice houses. So we threw like two two more. We, do, we threw two more that summer. So we threw three all together. The other two was at one of my boy's cribs, Andy. Shout out white boy Andy. Um and he lived on, like, this plantation-style, like, crib. Uh -huh. Like, it was huge, right? So we threw a party. Randomly, we're chilling at his crib, and we're like, yo, let's throw a party tonight. Because his, his rents were out the, 
we're out of town or something. And um, again, shut it down. We were just doing it, right? If we were throwing a party, nobody else was throwing a party. You know what I'm saying? It was on that level. Our third one at my boy Obi's crib, same thing, packed out the building. Now we're growing. We're starting to get a name behind us, right? Metal Apes, everybody knows Metal Apes. We start selling shirts. People are buying shirts. People are buying our gear. We're building the brand, right? So building a brand has always been into me in me as well. I digress, but yeah, like building a brand and business savvy has always been there for me as well. Um, so now we're at our fourth party, and this is where everything starts to go wrong. And I tell I've told this story many a times. Um, up to this point, I was a bad leader, right? Because I was the head of the group, but I wasn't ready for that right? There was a lot going on. I didn't know how to lead a group of young men in that sense. You know what I'm saying? I knew how to put things together, but I was still flawed in a lot of ways, right? And as we're moving towards this final New Year's party, you start to see cracks in the armor, cracks in the crew. And stop me at at any point if you got any questions. So we're moving towards this New Year's Eve party. It's going to be the biggest thing yet, right? We're getting insurance. We're getting. Our, we've got our LLC established. Um, we're we're talking to um, um, realtors about property, like to on um, where to throw the party in Ann Arbor because we got some bread, right? So we end up getting this abandoned warehouse, and we rent it out. I think it was like two thousand dollars to rent it for the night. And at this point, we're so big that we're selling tickets wholesale right? We're selling, like, cats are buying 20 tickets, wow. and then upselling, upcharging yeah, to yeah, people yeah. in, like, boroughs. There's, like, a whole secondary our, market. For bro, that. like, oh, it yeah. was bananas. When I tell you, like, we were selling um, VIP tickets for, like, 75, regular admission for, like, 50, you know what I'm saying? And we are playing off the market, you know? It's a hustler's game. It's just like moving anything else, whether it's computers, whether it's software, whether it's drug, anything, you know what I'm saying? Supply and demand. Right. You know, how much are you willing to pay for this ticket? So, like, we are hustling, right? And we're meeting up with people. It's the same strategy. Don't post it on social media. You'll get the ticket. It'll have the address on the back of the ticket, blase, blase. But, like I told you, there's cracks in the armor of the crew, of the team. And this has been happening over the next, the last few parties. You know what I'm saying? There's envy. It's been building up. It's been building up. There's envy. There's um, side eyes. For whatever reason, things that I should have nipped in the bud and actually had conversations with the team about because these are my friends, right? Um, So we finally get to the night of the party and a lot of the things are Bojangle, like our, our security I think I paid like $500 for our security. And we had like, I don't even know the number. It was like over 100, 200 people in this party. And advice to anybody throwing parties, your security is is top priority. Like if your security ain't tight, do not throw a party, ladies and gentlemen. Trust me. So we throw this party and again, there's, there's, there's issues within the team, you know, but the team is partying and everyone's like tipsy. No one's really tripping because it's party night, right? You know, like it's, there's stress working up to the party, but party night, yo, everyone loves everybody. Hey, bro, we made it. Da-da-da-da. We hugging each other. Um, biggest turnout yet, right? But remember I was telling how we were selling things wholesale. So we weren't really controlling the market. We weren't controlling who was at the event. Some people showed up to the party that didn't like other people that were at that party, right? And it's so big that it's getting out of control, Yeah. right? And me, I'm just like, oh, we partying, right? But at the same time, I'm trying to control things, right? I'm trying to be the person that everybody likes, which you can't be. It's, it's, it's very, it's impossible to have everyone like you. The people confront each other that don't like each other, and it blows up. It becomes this huge fiasco. People are fighting inside of the party. It spills to the outside of the party. You've got people the age of 16. It's been years, so I can't get in trouble. All right, so it's been like, it's like people the age of seven, people the age of 18, right? 
to 35, right? And we're all in the same building together, right? And everyone's drinking. Everybody's in their own circles, but everyone's 18 years old. You're not holding your drinks, like, if you're 35, right? So the 35-year-olds and people bounce out early, right? They're like, all right, it's a bunch of kids here. We outro. That fight, when that fight happens, right, it's a bunch of young cats, whether I think they're like 20s or something like that. But it spills over into the outside of the party. People end up getting stabbed. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like a riot. Like, you can watch it on YouTube. <laughs> I don't encourage you. It's not my finest moment. But it was like during the time of World Star. So, like, people are running around with the cameras. Roar Star, World Star, da, 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 da. This dude posted on YouTube that night, right? We'll get back. We'll get to that on the tail end of things. So, the police show up. Um, my team vacate, right? Because my name is on everything. My name is on the property. My name is on the insurance. My name is on... On the contracts, every contract that's signed, William Fairbanks, right? And my homies, they ain't got nothing to worry about, so they just shake the scene. And we already beefing. So they're like, yo, there's no reason to have William back. We out. Wow. Right? So they shake the spot. And um, the police show up, and they're dealing with me. You know, because there's there's people in ambulances because people really got laid out. People really were stabbed. People were really brought to the hospital. And they're talking to me and they're talking to me about the party, blase, blase. And then you still have young cats running in and out of sight, in and out of the um, the building. And so I turned and I'm like, yo, stop running in and out, right? The police now see that as an end to go into the building, right? Because they've already asked me, they're like, yo, are you selling alcohol? I'm like, no. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't operate a blind pig. You sell alcohol illegally, it's a blind pig. You go to jail for that. They end up going into the establishment. They see signs everywhere for prices of alcohol. They're like, oh, we thought you weren't working. We thought you weren't selling alcohol. Um, and this is another thing about my faith. My faith comes back in on this too. Because, so my mother is a praying woman, right? She's a prayer warrior, you know, for all those people that know the term prayer warrior. Right, so she's always praying frivolous, frivolous, frivolously for us, her her children, and she's she's adamant about covering us, right, in prayer. She also has built a strong relationship with the Ann Arbor PD Police Department because, again, we come from the hood, right? So people are always in the middle of the strip. Like, there's a strip that leads in my neighborhood that ends right in front of my crib, and everyone's rolling dice, smoking weed, drinking at the end of this strip. So my mother was always the one calling the police on these people, talking about, like, my mom, my children got to school in the morning, right? She was that mom, right? And she built this rapport with the police department because she's – Every holiday, she's bringing them, like, spaghetti and, like, turkey, whatever. She's building that relationship. This is where it comes back in with me years later on the back end. So they're, they're asking me, they're like, who are you? And I give them my name, and they look me up, and I see the woman cop. She looks at me, and she doesn't say it, but I, you know how you can tell? I'm like, you know who I am. <laughs> like, I looked at her, I was like, oh, you know who I am. Like, you, you ran my name. You understand that. I am the child of this woman, right? And it just reminded me, I'm like, that's God's grace. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's my mom putting in all those times. It's those prayers from before that are now hitting me now because I could have went to jail for operating a blind pig. I think I was 21. I could have went to jail. People were stabbed. You know, at some point. That could have been pretty bad. It, psh, someone got to take the rap. You know what I'm saying? I think about it all the time. I was like, if somebody died that night, who's going to take the rap? I'm going to take the rap for that. You know what I'm saying? At some point, they got to blame somebody. This black kid from the suburban Ann Arbor that just so happens to be from this small pocket in the hood. Yeah, we're going to put it on you. But God's grace kept me. And uh, But we were shamed in the newspaper. They did crucify us. Oh, they're... They're just trying to change the youth. They're trying to ruin our city, blah, 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 blah. It was bad, right? At that point, nobody wanted to touch me because I'm in the newspaper. Um, this party just went down. It was a complete disaster. You know what I'm saying? And I'm spending a lot of time in my mom's crib by myself because my friends no longer exist. They've disappeared. 
and I'm praying, and I'm thinking, yo, I got to get out of Ann Arbor. I got to get up out of here. Nobody's banging with me out here. And that's when Thoughts of Relocation came to me. And I'm like, all right, this is a story. And it's a fiction story. It's a dystopian story. But it, it, it's based around the idea of wanting to be elsewhere. And that's all I wanted to be in that moment of distress, pain, whatever you want to call it, you know, learning. You know, and I spent like another year and a half in Ann Arbor. You know, I developed different friendships. I ended up being friends with like some hippies from Ann Arbor. Shout out to Idol Hour. I love y'all to death. Um, I started, I, I developed some crazy relationships from moving solo. Ladies and gentlemen, there's great perks to riding by yourself. Because when you are in a crew, you oftentimes operate on the popular opinion of the crew. Right? right, but when you're by yourself, you're like, "Oh, I'll go talk to those hippies. Why not?" When before, my whole crew would be like, "Oh, what? We not Why going you, over? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going over there. We too cool. You know what I'm saying?" But I'm like, I met these people, dopest people, some of the dopest people ever. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid to stand on your own too. You know what I'm saying? You can still have that crew of friends, but if you want to do something, go do that shit. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how I ended up moving towards film. Thoughts of relocation started writing. Mm -hmm. It's a three-part series. It all came to me at once. Obviously, I have to write the stories. And I started writing the stories when I went back to school. That's a whole other story. Went back to school writing the... Um, so Thoughts of Relocation, I'm still writing on that, working on that novel right now. Right. But that's where it came. And I was like, all right, cool. Now, how do I implement all these ideas? And it became... The one big idea came to me at once where it was like, all right, I'm going to write this story. I'm going to turn the story into a screenplay, and then I'm going to turn the screenplay into a movie. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's how it went down. So thoughts of relocation. Yes. You start to, you know, you conceptualize it. You start to write. Mm -hmm. And how did, how did, from there, you know, walk us through, you know, where you are today. Okay. With not only the novel, but the the brand as a whole and even like your you know your start in the filmmaking journey okay right? cool um so after the blow up with metal apes i was isolated then i was like all right let me figure out how to get back into school all right i gotta get up out of here because in 2007 i i went to ohio westland right and like i was saying i first generation i didn't perform well I ended up taking time off, and that's when we started throwing the parties and whatnot. Fast forward a couple years later, the blow-up happens, and I'm like, all right, I got to figure out what it is I want to do with my life and how I'm going to maneuver in it. I ended up coming back to Columbus, and I was able to stay with my best friend, Derek, and his mom. Shout out to Derek and Mandy Siebert. I love y'all. Forgive me for using governments, but I love y'all so much, man. But um, they held me down. They let um, out in German Village. I was living nice. I was living in German Village for like a year and a half, two years. You know what I'm saying? And then um, I ended up living with my girl at the time, her and her family. Shout out, Mary. I love her so much. If I could be with her today, I would. You know, but <laughs> that's another story for another time, hey, amen. So, you know, <laughs> We're, we're gonna have to like touch. We're gonna circle back on all these stories. We got so much, right? So, but anyways, um, I ended up. Long story short, fast forward past all of that, I ended up getting a job at a dance studio. From that dance dance studio, I ended up getting a job at this recruiting firm downtown Columbus, and I helped them write their standard operating procedures. Okay. They ended up taking, right, and it just so happened. When I first left school, it happened because um, finances, I ended up owing a school some bread, and my academics was trash, right? So now, fast forward a couple, two years, three years later, I've been able to take a couple community classes, bring my GPA up. I've paid off the bread that I owe the institution, so I'm actually able to be reinstated at Ohio Westland. So... When I lose my job at this inst at the um, at the recruiting office, they give me a stipend. Is that a stipend? No. What is it called when they fire you? Severance. Severance. Yep. Get a severance. And they didn't they didn't fire me. They imploded. Let me let me clear that <laughs> up. Okay, I don't get fired. Like, no, furlough. Okay. Right. Furlough. Furlough. Right. So um, 
They gave me a severance, and I was like, all right, cool. What do I, what do, I do with my life at this time? Mm. I was like, I'm going to go back to school. My mom had been telling me to go back to school, but I'm like, no, I'm going to be the biggest rapper. I'm not going back to school. F school, what you thought. And it just so happens, perfect storm. I get furloughed, severance package. School is paid off. I met with a counselor. I'm like, oh, yeah, come back, right? And they just so happened to be offering film as a major. When I first went, it was um, sports management because I had no idea what the fuck I wanted to do. Okay. Right? My first advisor, colleges, make sure y'all got some dope advisors because, first of all, my first advisor, when when I went in, she's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I'm first generation. I don't know what I want to do. Right? Y'all got to have people there that can sort that with your students. Right? Because we don't know. Yeah. Especially first generation. I mean, that, that could be a whole topic in itself because I, I feel like that's one of the things that, that's lacking for um, for people that are not as privileged or first generation, like you said, that Fact. we don't have. I mean, even in, like, in the schools, in the high schools, you don't really have a lot of that uh, that guidance to, 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 to know what options are available and exactly. which paths you could take. We, exactly. You nailed it right on the head. We don't know the options. Yeah. Like... I'm looking at her like, I don't know, Miss White Lady. Like, you're supposed to tell me. That's why I'm sitting in this chair. You're my counselor. You're, you're my advisor. You're supposed to advise me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's another thing. It's just like back in the days when, you know, you'd be like, oh, you go to court and you're like, you're about to be judged by your peers. And you look over and it's just, you look at everybody in the jury section and don't nobody over there look at you, look like you. Right. So they don't know how to, to relate to yeah. you. Right. Digression. Right. So. I end up going back, and before, when my grades were trash, because I didn't know what I wanted to do, right? The second time around, I'm back, and I'm acing everything. I'm, um, I'm Dean's List every semester, killing it. And I tell people to this day, I'm like, I've always had that psyche. I've always had that mental capacity. I've always had that level of... of, of intellect right okay it's just i didn't know how to put it in the right direction you know like the first time around it wasn't like some switched and i was just like oh i'm a genius now you know what i'm saying it was just i knew what it was you know it's it's like generational wealth our generate generational health our generational mental capacity they know how to do it right so they succeed and they excel right People who have good grades, their children have good grades because they had good grades and they know how to get good grades. So they pass that down to their children. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was the same thing with me. I just had to figure out what worked for me, what system, because I excelled in, in high school. I got to college, my grades dropped and plummeted. And then when I took some time off and went back, they skyrocketed. You know what I'm saying? So ended up going to school. And at this point, you know, I know film is what I want to do. And I'm grinding. And this is just in 2019. This is super recent, right? Yeah. And I am researching cameras even before I get the camera. Like, my hustle is there, right? I'm studying. I'm doing what I need to do. I'm learning how cameras work even before I go back to school. It's crazy. When I was in a lot of my classes, I'm like, a lot of this is redundant because I've already learned it, right? I already applied myself. I know how the camera works. I know how to work a production. I know pre-production. I know post. I know all of that because I applied myself because this is what I want. And I know for a fact, this is what I want, right? All that stuff that I thought I wanted, the music, the, the lights, whatever, the, the cameras, action. No, I want to make stories. So let me go ahead and kill this. And I was working at the time. I was working like 40 to 50 hours a week while going to school full time. Like wow. I was killing it. And I had a roommate at the time and shout out Debo. He held it down. That's my homie for life. I love you, bro. Um, but yeah, so that's what's brought me here. I, gra I ended up graduating, but because I had been building relationships while I was in school, doing all that groundwork while I was in school, before school, you know, planting seeds out in Columbus, I had been doing um, sound engineering at some establishments downtown. Um, and they were showing me love. So I'm just making all these different plugs. Um, as soon as I graduated, I was doing videos and stuff for like a summer for free. And then 
Wait. Yeah, so I graduated in, I believe it's 2019, May of 2019, something like that. So it's very recent. It's very recent. It's very recent. And I was doing stuff for free. And it's been like two years, year and a half, and now I'm, I'm, I'm pursuing it full time. You know what I'm saying? So while you were going to school, you were already kind of, you know, laying the groundwork for what you're doing today, right? Exactly. So, you know, how, how did you go about that? Like, I mean, was that something that you were driven to like, you know, you wanted to figure it out on your own or were there, you know, because you, you said, were you doing work for free during that time period when mm-hmm. you were in school as well? Like how, how you know, let's kind of dive in a little bit into uh, how, how all that came about. So initially it was, so I got, I saw on Craigslist an opening position for a sound engineer at the Walrus. It's on 4th Street, 4th Main. East Main, East Main, it's not East Main. And I had no sound engineering um, experience at all. And I went, and I'm like, yeah, I could do this. You know, like, I'm a YouTube University scholar, right? So for the little bit that I learned from YouTube, I'm able to finagle my way, and they give me ample gigs, right? So being there, I'm working with bands every weekend. And I'm meeting people every weekend. And I've always had this gift of gab, gab, right? I've always had the gift, gift of woo. I've always had that charismatic, charismatic side of me, right? I can talk to people. I know how to pitch. I know how to sell. I know how to talk. I don't know if I know how to sell. I, I retract that statement. But I know how to talk, right? And um, by the grace of God, there was this Brittany she doesn't fight me. It scares me. <laughs> I hope she does not fight me. But yeah, she has a party at the Walrus, right? And I have to show up because I'm that person that always goes above and beyond. It's like, yo, if you need me, I'm there. You know, I'm always looking for the opportunity. Oh, there's something wrong. I don't work tonight, but you call me, I'm there. I'm not doing anything else. So they end up calling me because this lady, this beautiful lady is having a party and her sound is like spazzing. I show up, I correct the issue. And this is after I've become well-versed. This is like years, a year or so after I've been working at the Walrus. Okay. Right? So now I know how the system works. Da, 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 da. I'm, I'm able to get my feet below me, you know, and I'm, I'm killing it. Right? So I show up, I fix her issue, I go home. A couple weeks later, she comes back in to the Walrus, and I'm working a, a show that night. And she's over in the main bar area, and she's like, um... You fixed my my um my sound for my birthday. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, oh, that was you? You know, we have a little quick conversation. And she we get into conversing about what I do. I'm like, I'm actually in school right now. Um, and you know, I'm working to be a filmmaker. She's like, I know who you need to meet. You need to be at this party this Friday. I'm gonna put you on the list. She makes the call to a sin. Shout out a sin. And she's like, All right, yep, you're on the list, just show up. So I show up at that party and I bring my camera and I'm just taking pictures. Like, I'm like, I'm not asking for no funds. I'm just there taking pictures, kill it. And while I'm there, I'm also building my social following. I take a picture of somebody because, again, going back to that business hustle that I've already always had. You know, back in the day, they used to do where the cats in New York or whatever, they would go up and take a picture to the tourists and they'd be like, oh, here, I took a picture of you, $10. And they sell it to them. Right? Yeah. Today, the modern day version of that is, all right, let me take a picture of you. All right, cool. You want that picture? Follow me on Follow Instagram. Me, yeah. And I'll send it to you. Right? So now I'm hitting every event and I'm building my following. I'm getting like 100 followers every week. Right? Because I'm on that hustle. And it's working. They're like, oh, yeah, look, the picture looks great. And I always take it, show it to them. All right, you want it? Oh, and they have gone, oh, this picture is so amazing, bro. How could I get it? And I'm like, bro, ain't nothing. Just hit me up. Like, check me out on Instagram. Oh, I'm going to follow you right now. Bada bing, bada boom. We there, right? We do that for a couple of weeks to a month to a year. I'm doing that stuff for free. It started off with a sin. A sin did it in the winter, right? This is like my winter semester. And then the summer, he's throwing these parties. Club Paradise. Shout out Club Paradise. When the pandemic's over, it's going to be cracking. But Club Paradise... And they're doing it on the roof of Callahan's, and I'm doing the same thing. But now people are starting to recognize me. I'm starting to build these relationships, right? Did that for a summer. Things passed. Did that all for free. 
right? I'm just showing up doing things for free. The next summer, he hits me up and he's like, yo, Will, what's your rate? And I'm like, oh, snap. Well, I'm get paid for this? Yeah, let me tell you. Let me <laughs> let me tell you what my rate is. And I think this is the summer that I graduated, right? And I mean, my dates might be wrong, but you know, um, he hits me up. He asks me because I've been I've been out of school now for about a year and a half. He hits me up now. I'm saying literally now. I've been out of school for a year and a half. Yeah. I'm an unconventional student, right? But at that time, I think I had been out for like two months. You know, so I said like two fifty. $250 or something. Still super low. You understand it. It's yeah. super crazy low. And um, I'm still killing it. You know, I'm still, you know, every single gig I get, I'm putting my best foot for it. I'm trying to knock every recap video out the window. I think and still think to this day that I'm the dopest, right? And so I'm applying myself in that sense. And from that, I built out of the relationships. My boy Obi from Metal Apes, now he has a body of work that he wants to shoot a music video for, right? And again, I give him the low, and we shoot like five videos, five to seven videos for the low. People love these videos. Artists, right? Along with his fan base, but artists in particular for me, they love his videos. So now they're, Will, let me do a video. Can I get a video? Can I get a video? I'm still doing them for the low, right? And then um, same thing with, like, the events. I'm doing them for low. Now another year passes, and I'm like, all right, let me start to do a little bit of marketing. And this is this past July, right? And... I start doing, because up to this point, I had done no marketing. Everybody just hits me up for stuff, right? And I'm working corporate. You're that corporate. guy. No, I'm not that guy, but, because I'm, I'm only making, like, yes, because I'm giving cheap, I'm giving cheap work. Like, that's the only reason. Like, they're like, oh, yeah, I can get some, I can get some decent to good work done for $250 bet. Just like we talked about it. Like, cats don't really understand the price, right? Yeah. So, I'm feeding that monster. I'm the person who's like, all right, let's just do it for 250 y'all. Yeah? Like, I'll be that guy, right? Yeah, you, so you're the guy that I keep losing work to, Exactly. Right? In the beginning. In the beginning, <laughs> right? So um, we're doing that. And um, in July, I'm like, all right, let me do a little bit of promotion because I had done no promotion. I had been working corporate, too. So I, I was just, I wasn't, I, I was working but I wasn't like, all right, I need to make a lot of bread off of this. My whole focus was like, let's build this resume, right? Okay. And now July hits and I end up shooting. I did like a little um, discount, like a little sale or whatever. But it was still like $300, $350. Uh, I wasn't going lower than that. But I end up shooting like 14 videos, like 14 to 17 videos in the month of July by itself. Wow. Yeah. And... Excuse me. At that point, I'm like, oh, it's on. Right? I leave out of July and I bring my prices up to like $750. i am like, all right, cool. If you want me, this is what the number is. Right? And cats ended up rocking with it. People are like, all right, cool. Let's roll with it. And then I did it again. I was like, all right, let me actually see what I can actually be going for. Right? And so I started to get prices and I'm still trying to figure it out, right? I'm I'm a baby when it comes to like this life. And just very recently, you know, not by my own choosing, I had to leave the corporate world, right? And but I have been grinding. I've been grinding this whole summer, mm -hmm. right? I've been grinding this whole year. You know, 2020 has been a year of growth for your boy. It's been a struggle just like everybody else. I've been through some some crazy ish in the last month pray for your boy out there if y'all listening pray for your boy i'm praying for y'all but within that struggle i've grown tremendously right because i haven't stopped and those remember back in the beginning mama you can do whatever you want fly birdie fly yep. you can do this right that's always been in me so it hasn't been a woe is me let me stop it's always been a all right william it's on you my mother will always say this too you're not a victim she will always say that to me you're not wow. a victim you're not a victim. Yeah, okay. That sucked. You're not a victim. Yeah, okay. You you fell short. It might not have been your fault, but you're not a victim. So that's how I operate. No matter good or bad, I'm like, yo, we're going to keep rocking. You know, and 
that with the grace of God, I've been able to, to grasp my anointing. You know what I'm saying? And being able to recognize it as it's all you. It's all about what you want to do. Right. And now I'm at the point where it's like I've done enough. In July, like I said, I shot 14 videos. From July until now, I've shot over 25 videos, right? And just repetition, 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 repetition. Work, 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 work. And now I'm at the point, and I've learned a lot of lessons, where I'm like, I'm not going to take that. I don't want to take that project. I don't want to take that project. I don't want to take that project. I'm charging you this much. I'm charging you this much. And this is why. So that's where I'm at now. I'm full-time in this, in this game. Um, I'm trusting God as, you know, from the front door. And he's providing, you know what I'm saying? Like he's providing. I'm pitching people my price and people are like, cool. And now I'm starting to bring on a crew, you know, and I'm, because I do my work, I do my homework, you know, I'm worth it. But again, it's still work finding those people that can recognize you and see you for what you're worth. So that's where I'm at. So there's a lot to unpack and like there's there's definitely a few like different points that I, I want to elaborate a little bit more on. Cool, because I know I've been going. <laughs> and you know, you said it's seems like it's it's been a wild like two years. Yeah, like, man. Two yeah, exactly. Two years has been there, crazy. There's, there's definitely uh, you know, a, a lot in that. So kinda you know, even even going back to like when you first started doing a lot of the you know, doing the photos at the clubs and, mm-hmm. and at the events, you know, even even as, as you were starting to like pick up the camera and like learn how to do it, like what, you know, what was driving you at that time to, to even continue going to the events? Because yeah, sure. You're not, you know, you're not being compensated for it, but what was still driving you to like continue to, to go, you know, was, was were you thinking like, okay, I want to continue to grow my social, mm-hmm. grow my social status and following or, you know, what was driving you at that time to continue to do that? Did you kind of, I mean, I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is where, were you expecting some kind of outcome down the road or were you just kind of doing it because that's what you felt like you were had to do at that time? Okay. That's a great question. Um, I, I, it was the big picture for me, you know, everything that I do has purpose, right? I'm, I recognize social media for what it is. It has purpose, right? It is not who I am. Right. But I also understand the bigger following you have, the more likely you are to be seen by somebody, the more likely your stuff is to be spread. Social proof, that credibility, et cetera, et cetera. Social media don't make me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I tell people all the time, if it wasn't for what I do, I wouldn't be on social media. Right. Right? Straight up about 6 o'clock. That's how I roll. For me, I've always thought about the end game. Right? I think my purpose here is to, one... On the, when I say here, my purpose here on the planet is to, one, show love, is to encourage, is to, to present my life as a testimony, to represent God, first and foremost. And this is a promise I made with God back in the day when I was a child. I said, God, if you take me out of the hood, if you take me from where I'm at, if you present me and you put me on the right stage, I promise I'll tell the world about you. I promise that I'll tell people who you are and I promise that I'll tell people that you're the reason why I'm here. And even, I've I've done it on every single podcast. This ain't gonna be nothing new. That's why I'm here. God is the reason why I'm here, right? And my end game is always that. He shows me what to do. He okay. says, all right, yeah, go build, your, go build your social presence because this is what it's going to be. You know, I've already, I've already given you the tools. You know how to talk to people. You know how to, um, to make people laugh. You know, how to, um, you know how to get people invested. You know how to, you know how to paint a picture, right? So the, all these things are already there. So it's all about practicing, putting them into practice now and building and building and building, right? And... I always think about my reasoning for doing it in God, one, and then my mother. My mother's a big inspiration. You know, I want to be able to provide for her. I want to be able to break generational chains. I want to be able to take care of mine, you know? And I I honestly, I tell people this all the time, I think I'm a king, right? 
you're a king. Yep. Right? It's all about how you think about these things and how you view the world around you and you view yourself. My mother has convinced me. My mother has convinced me that I am a king. Right? Right. <laughs> I am thoroughly convinced. Right? And you're and, living it. You know, and I'm living it. Right? And that's what it is. That's what keeps me going. Because before a person is a king, right? You think about even back to Disney. Movies show us this all the time, right? You think about King Arthur, Guy Ritchie's King Arthur, right? You think about these movies where people are are removed from their inheritance, right? And they kind of don't, they have no idea who they are. They have no idea that they're actually the king, right? Mm -hmm. They have no idea that they actually come from royalty, right? And the whole movie, they're, they're discovering themselves, the whole movie, they're figuring out, oh, this is who I am. The whole movie, they are reminded certain things, right? And that's what, instead of me discovering it, you know, at some point they figure it out, right? Yeah. And then they're like, yo, I'm going for this. I'm hustling for it. Nothing's stopping me. I'm going for it 110%. And that's kind of what's happened, right? I got to a point where my mother reminded me, she's like, you're a prince, you're a king. And now it's, all right, bet, what, what does it mean to be a king, right? Because I'll tell anybody straight up and down at 6 o'clock, I go through it. I go through pain. I go through bad days. I go through days where I can't, where I don't feel like getting up in the morning. I go through days where I'm like, damn, I'm not going to make it today. I go through days where I'm like, oh, shit, I messed up. Oh, dang, I, I might have ruined a relationship. Oh, this might not work out. I've gone through those things, right? But then I always say, don't let your past control you. You're a king, William. You're not perfect. That don't mean you're perfect. But what a king does is he keeps going. And he realizes that it's bigger than him. It's not about his kingdom. It's not about his kingliness. It's about his kingdom, right? It's about what he's trying to establish and the person who he's working for. Because I don't work for myself. I work for God, the ultimate king, right? So I always remember those things. That's what keeps me going. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm honest with myself. You know, that's one of the biggest things is when you're honest with yourself and you just say, yeah, today you sucked. Well, learn from it. You know, I think that we live in a society where people don't know how to own up to their mistakes. So they, they, when they do make a mistake, they harness it and they say, oh, man, I'm going to go sit in the corner and not do anything. I'm going to be static. And it's like, nah, bro, you're not going to make everybody happy. Trust me. You're going to work with a client where someone's going to be mad at you. And it's going to be your fault, yeah. right? It's your fault. You didn't meet a deadline. You didn't, you know, you didn't pull through on your word or whatever. Yeah, bro. All, not all the time. <laughs> I mean, it happens. It happens. You know, and like, I, I think that, you know, like you said, it's, it's something that, I mean, everybody goes through it. I mean, you, I mean, I, I've, I've struggled with it a lot where, you know, you tend to avoid those difficult conversations. Let's say, you know, you can't meet a deadline, mm -hmm. you know, for filmmaking example, you can't meet a deadline and, you know, you avoid having that difficult conversation with the client. You don't want to have it because yeah. you don't want to deal with it because, you know, you know, you fucked up and, and you don't <laughs> no. want to own up to it, you know, but like, you know, the hard truth is that you have to, you know, you have to hold yourself accountable, um, you know, not only for yourself, but for the client, because you it's like your word is bond. Exactly. And you have to, you know, it's not, you know, bad business, good business, all of that. Like you have to, you know, own up to your word. You have to, you know, just you gotta, own it, you gotta own it. You gotta own you it. Gotta like, I mean, there's it. no other way to put it. Like, you de you definitely have to own it. And it, it's it's important. Like, I feel like a lot of people they they don't they don't own it. And like, I, I feel like it holds a lot of people back because um, you tarnish relationships. Um, you you know, some people even give up. Fact. When, you know, when when you, when you get to that point where you're like, oh shit, like it's not working out. And and you know, a lot of it, it's. You know, even going back to like what we were talking about, like all the pricing or not getting your worth. And, um, you know, I feel a lot of the times that, that, you know, you get people get into that position and they're like, oh, well, they give up because I can never, you know, you start finding things to put blame on. But, you know, you don't really sit down and analyze, OK, why is it that I feel this way or why is right. it that I'm thinking this way? And, and 
and try to figure out, okay, well, what are the things that I need to do to, to, you know, like you said, push forward and, and figure it out? Because, you know, like you said, it's, you know, you're, you're responsible for yourself and you have to own up to your, your, sh- your shortcomings and your mistakes and, and nobody's going to fix that for you. Exactly. So, you know, kind of going back to that, that whole thing of like own, owning up and kind of like, I want to say like digging, digging yourself up out of like those dark places or like those struggle, you know, those times when you're struggling, mm-hmm. you know, what, what are, you know, what are some other things that, you know, maybe you could kind of, you know, share to like the listeners or to you know, anybody who's listening, who's like going through a, a tough time because it's, it's not always easy. And, and, you know, w- what can you do to, to, own, to own those shortcomings? Um, my biggest thing, and that I've learned this recently, it's always been on my mind, but I've I've owned it recently. I had to take a sip for y'all because it's gonna be deep. So like now, um, for me, it is living above the fear, because the, it's oftentimes fear which pre- prevents us from owning our mistakes because we say, Oh, if I say it's my fault, they won't want to work with me anymore. Yeah. Or, Oh, if I, if I tell them that I could have done better, or if I, if I, um, if I let on that, I am the source of the issue. I'm going to lose opportunity. Right. Once you lose the fear, right? You realize how much you're capable of because now you're owning it. Like you just said, if you can say, yo, that was my bad. The first step, we all know the first step in recovery. We all know the first step, right? You got to admit that you on drugs. Cause you know what I'm saying? You got to admit that you smoking that smokes like now, but, um, you have to be able to say, I am the issue. Yeah. Right? You have to be able to say that I always use fitness. You always have to say that. You have to be able to say, I don't like going to the gym. Right? A lot of people are like, oh, I can do it. Like, no, you can't. If you don't like going to the gym, you have to identify that. And then you have to say, all right, I don't like going to the gym, but I'm going to go anyways. Right? But until you can say, I don't like going to the gym, you'll always think that it's something else that's preventing you from getting to the gym. Right? Same thing if it's like, oh, I don't like studying. Right? You're blaming your failures. And you're getting bad grades in all your classes. Right? And you're steady telling yourself, oh, it's not because I don't like to study. It's because the teacher. It's because of it's because of the weather. It's because, oh, such and such. Like, no, because you don't like to study. And you didn't study. And you didn't know nothing on that test. And you ended up failing. Surprise, surprise. Right? It's all about being able to say. <laughs> it's all about being able to be honest with yourself. Yeah. And don't be afraid to be honest with yourself. Because... That fear, that's going to keep you static. Facts. It's going to keep you from, and I've been there, right? I've been there, whether it's your job, whether it's, like, just recently, like I told you, like, I'm doing this full time, not my choice. Like, I lost a job, right? Mm -hmm. Being vulnerable with you, Louis, I'm being vulnerable, bro. Like, but before I did, already made up in my mind I was like I'm not gonna let this control my life think about all the times and this might not relate to you because you're doing what you love to do right but people think about all the times where you hate going to work right but you're afraid of not getting that check and you're afraid exactly you're like oh I'm gonna show up to this job that I hate because oh I'm afraid because of da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And yes, fear is a tool to keep us alive, right? Yeah. Yo, I'm not going to cross that crazy ass river because I'm afraid to drown, right? But we have to be strong enough to realize when fear is fake. Because sometimes we're in these positions where we're afraid of literally the boogeyman, 
and I mean the boogeyman by the boogeyman don't exist, right? We're afraid of, of these facades. We're afraid of these, these... That we make up ourselves. That we make up ourselves. We construct ourselves. Like, when I got the news, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, dang. Because I already had... I had the conversation with myself. I said, you know what, William? You're not operating in fear no more. Because you've done the work. You've put in the time. You've built the resume. Do the work. Don't be afraid of the work. That's another thing that I say, people. Don't be afraid of the work. Don't be afraid to make the call. You're making calls for a job that you hate. You're making cold calls. you walking door to door, knocking on doors, selling knives for a job that you hate. Do that for yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, even it kind of goes back to what we were talking about, like, you know, even with this podcast, it's, uh, you know, early on I felt like it was something that I wanted to do. And it, you know, part, 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 part way through it, like, I felt like, oh, it was a lot of work. And I wasn't putting as much energy into it as I should have. Right. And then, you know, talking to Ross and, and Josh, I don't know if you've met Josh, um, but that's Ross's right hand, right? Yeah. Um, shout out Josh. Shout out Josh. <laughs> so, I mean, like for them, like, man, they're like, like one of my best, fr some of my best friends. Right. And like they, I mean, even like in this whole creative world, like they've really been motivators for getting the podcast started. They've helped me out a lot with, you know, working together and, and, and even just having having other people that I can that are in the same field as me that right. I can talk to and relate to and that we right. could kind of help each other grow, right? So it, it got to a point where like I'm not putting as much energy into like the podcast and, and I'm like thinking to myself like fuck like why why do I put so much energy to client work? Right. To all these other things and my own thing like I'm not you know, doing the you push most, it to the side. I'm pushing it to the side and like not 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 doing as much as I could with right. it. So I mean even today here, like this is the first time we're doing video. And gang, gang. you know, it's it's something that I initially put off because I didn't want to do I didn't want to have to deal with right. oh, I have something else to edit. But you know, thinking about it like, oh this is my thing. Like why my thing should probably take priority over everything else. Trump's everything, bro. It's for me. And it's 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 at the end of the day I'm only going to get out of it what I put in. Fact. So if I'm not putting in 100% and putting a, a lot of energy into it, then I, how can I expect it to, to perform well or perform better or to get the results that I want to get? Fact. So, you know, like I, and I, I think a lot of people, like you said, they don't put in that work or have these expectations without wanting to put in that effort to get where you want to get. Right. So kind of fast forwarding a little bit to today you know a lot of this stuff has, is very recent you're experiencing it right now yeah man god's good man. so you know what are some of those things that you've learned i mean even even this year because like i know this, this year has been tough with pandemic and everything else going on in the world like how how have you been able to navigate that and what are some of the things that you have learned now that you know you're in this world you know doing it on your own and, and trying to, you know, making a living off of, you know, this creative life? Um, I would say that faith. <laughs> I tell people all the time I'm not a preacher, but, yo, faith is everything, man. Because, like, for me, it's hard grinding and working and 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 putting in, hours of work and you don't see a result right for a week or for a, a freaking summer you're doing everything for free you're grinding you're tired on top of all the work you're doing you're doing things for free right but that faith that understanding that yo this is all with purpose it's not gonna show today it's like the seed right you plant a seed and you water it you water it water it. you don't see no action you're like oh shit i'm a lot of people stop watering that seed on the fifth day, right? They don't see anything. And they don't see anything. But little did they know, if they would have just watered it for a couple more days, they start to see a little sapling, a little spring up in the up in the up in the the seed. And that's my thing, right? Is understanding. And that's what's gotten me here is strictly my faith, right? Because I'm not supposed to be here, Lewis. I'm right. not I supposed mean, to be here. We talked about it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to be here. You understand what it is. Yeah. Like, you uprooted from Puerto Rico. Like, 
you're not supposed to be here and you're thriving in the thing that you love to do, right? That's a miracle. You woke up this morning, miracle. If we, and that's another thing that, that helps me even through the pandemic is, is identifying the little miracles, right? Yeah. I woke up this morning and I'm breathing right now, miracle. Straight up and down. Like people can, you know, I, <laughs> people talk about science, right? We know how the body functions, right? But we don't know how the body functions. It's like, yo, to take a breath, like brass tacks, it's like, dang, I'm breathing without thinking. I'm here living without thinking. You know what I'm saying? And that's what keeps me going. Realizing the probability of me even being here is so small, right? The fact that we live on a we live on a planet that is stuck in a a um it's fixed within a cycle, right? You know how perfect the elements have to be for Earth to exist, for me and you to exist. They have to be so perfect. If right. anything was off, a molecule was off, we wouldn't uh, be here right now. We wouldn't be here right now. So if you recognize that, right, and you recognize that through all of this stuff, and uh, forgive us for the interference, the the world around us is making noise, but we are gonna keep rocking. If we can recognize how special we are, right how important we are, how vital we are. Because, like we just said, the slightest thing, and we wouldn't be here. Life would cease to exist. Right. So that's another thing that keeps me going. Um, during the pandemic, it's actually taught me to slow down and look at my life for what it is. It's actually been a great blessing because now everything is going online. Everything is going digital. You know, another thing with my faith, I couldn't plan on that happening. Right. I'm busier now than when I was when, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything was at business as usual. I'm more busy now than then because everything is going online. Everything is digital. Everybody needs that. Right. So, I mean, I had to slow down. I had to get some things together. Um, I've I mean, just like everyone else in the world. The pandemic has affected me. And what is that? I have no idea. I don't know if it's like a siren or some kind of truck. But no, um, it's, it's understanding, to answer your question, the pandemic caused me to slow down. I had to learn a lot about myself. Um, everything became working from home. Um... A lot of it was managing my time now because now people are hitting me up. Yo, well, let's do a video. Da, 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 da. Now I'm picking and choosing. And again, it goes back to the faith thing of like saying, don't take everything that's presented to you. Take what you can kill. Take what you can knock out the park, you know, or take at least what you can get on base. Don't take on, don't take on something that you're going to miss on. You know, like you take something, you, you do a trash product and now you looking silly. You know, and now that lowers your value. So, I mean, um, again, that and understanding my my level of royalty and my mother and my family, my reasons for doing it, remembering those reasons for why you do it, keep you going through the pandemic because it's been hard. I'm not going to hold you. It's been hard. Well, you know what I'm man. saying? I feel it. It's been tough, right? Even just for me being vulnerable. I live by myself, right? Um, I'm single. Um, the girl that would be don't want nothing to do with me on that sense, right? Because of me, right? Um, um, I'm trying to figure things out within myself. I'm trying to grow and be better. I've, I've, I've I've hurt people. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to be able to to be honest with yourself on where you're at, right? Because what again, when you're able to acknowledge those things, you're able to grow from them, right? And I'm able to put it into my work. And I'm and I do have beautiful people around me at the same time. And I do have air in my lungs, and I do have sun shining through, and I do have a God that created the universe, right? So yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm good. But I'd be foolish and I'd be a lie to tell people that it's just hunky-dory. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? But but even with all of that, with you know, acknowledging and being honest with yourself, yeah, and accepting, you know, the circumstances, you're still able to push through and and move forward. And in, on that note, you know, can you elaborate? You know what what's next for you know thoughts of relocation? How is that? How is is that something that you're going to continue to grow? Um, as, as you grow the brand, it, 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 I guess talk to us a little bit more because you mentioned it, it's it's a you know it's a novel that you're, right. you're you're wanting to make that into a film right and like I, I know there's been like little short pieces and stuff that you've shared on social media that you know that are you know or, moving around in that, that direction moving in that direction right. so I mean talk about like what what are some of the things that you have like in the pipeline with that and like what do you you know how are you trying to develop that okay um, well thoughts of relocation. Developed into Torp, which is the brand today. Thoughts of Relocation Productions. We just threw the P on the end. Um, but essentially, I'm working on a few different things. I'm over here recording myself. Shout out to IG Live. Um, but I plan on... I'm working on a lot of different things, Lou. Um, I'm working on my novel. Yeah. I'm nine chapters in. Okay. Well, I would say 10, 11 chapters in now I've been working. Um, and Torp is the brand now. Okay. So it's Thoughts of Relocation Productions. So it started off with the novel, Thoughts of Relocations. And then at some point within all the madness, I was like, all right, how do I turn this into a production company? Because I was like, all right, let's do productions. Filmmaking, let's make films. And then I was like, all right, cool, let's throw on the P. Torp, bam, it's easy. And... Right now, the pieces that I'm working on have nothing to do with the novel. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, I guess that's why I should have asked off off the jump. But yeah, like, uh, I know I've seen some of that some of that stuff that you shared online. Yeah, so I, I, was, I wasn't sure if it was tied to the novel or if it was like its own. No, thing. the novel is my baby. The novel is like, yo, come correct with the budget. Are we not shooting it? Like that's the novel. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing where it's just like, yo, we have demands, right? Right. Um, but. I'm working on some shorts right now. Um, I'm working on about three different shorts. I have a short called In and Out. I got a short called The Jet Streams, and I got another short. Do I have another short? I got another short. Got In and Out, Jet Streams, Story of Her. It's a visual album that I'm working on because I told you that I do music as well. Right. So I got those three shorts. And then I have features. I have some features that I'm writing, screenplays. I have um, New Age Spike. I have um, Oranges. And these are just all productions that will go under Torp. I also have, Torp is a lifestyle brand. So I have Torp Fest, which is going to be like music and live performance. And then I have Torp Talks, which is going to be you know, like TED Talks, but Torp Talks, holla at your boy. And then I have Torp Gear, and everything is just Torp. You know, it's a universal brand. It's a lifestyle. And what I'm doing right now is I'm building the brand, which is me. I am an example of the brand. I'm not the only example, but I am an, I am the example. You know what I'm saying? Right. I am, first and foremost, a man of faith. Second, I am human. I am flawed. Third, I'm dope, Right? I'm cool, I'm smart, I'm intellectual. Four, I'm striving for greatness, right? That's what I believe Torp is. Torp is greatness, right? Torp is thoughts of relocation. It's thoughts of being better. It's thoughts of being greater. It's Because change starts with the thought. It starts with the mental. You say, oh, dang, I want to be better. Oh, dang, I want to stop eating this certain type of way. Or, dang, I want to stop talking this certain type of way. Or, dang, I want to start living this, this certain type of way, right? It starts with the thought, right? And from that thought, it develops into action. But it starts with the thought, right? And that's one thing that I think a lot of people skip. They, they think that it's just like, oh, yes, act. Like, nah, bro, spend some time in meditation. Spend some time in actually thinking about what you want to do. So that's what Torp is. It's about being better. It's about growing. It's about striving. You know what I'm saying? That's the surface. But then um, on the on the underground, it's I'm talking about the rapture because I'm thinking about relocation, thoughts of relocation. Okay. Thinking about like leaving Earth and like heaven. That's thoughts of relocation to me. 
And again, I'm not this preachy, oh, you know, have you accepted God as your, you know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ is your savior. You know, Jesus is my savior, but you know what I'm saying? I'm not that person. I use my life as a testimony. People ask me about it and we grow, right? Yep. Torp is about love. I'm going to love you, whoever you are, wherever you come from, whatever you look like, however you smell, whatever you eat, and whatever you, whatever, I'm going to love you. And that's what Torp is. And so with my pieces, I want to showcase that. I want to showcase nostalgia. I want to showcase pain. I want to showcase joy. I want to showcase comedy. And um, just like stories, you know what I'm saying? And I want them to be dope. At the end of the day, I'm an artur. I want them, I want people when they, when they see my work, I want them to say, oh, that's Will. Will did that. You know, my work. You know, and even on like the, the client work that I do, sometimes I can't help but put my touch on it. And people are like, oh, yeah, Will, I saw one of your pieces. Biggest compliment in the world. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, you saw that? Oh, you know that was me. You do that was me. Yeah, that was me. God bless you. Amen. It's amazing. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that. that's, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's the direction that I'm working in. And that's 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 what Torp is, and that's what Thoughts of Relocation is. The novel, I love it very much. I think I'm actually gonna, you know, um, invite me next time, and we'll just read the epilogue and the um, the prologue, and then the first couple chapters. Let's do it for yeah. sure. That'd be dope, bro. Man, you know, Will, thank you for coming on. Like, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I I'm honored to hear your story to get to know you a little bit more. And it's 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 cool. Like I'm 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 glad that we finally got we had the opportunity. Me to do too, this. man. Um, I, I've definitely learned a lot, and like it, it's crazy listening to your story because there there's definitely a lot that I can relate to, and a lot of the similar experiences that I had. So I think that's that's awesome. And it's you know I think it's you you have a, you have a great story, and you know much success to to Torp and and seeing how that developed. You know we'll definitely have to have you come back on in the future. We'll, you know, you said do a reading and yeah, talk about all, all the different things that you have going on. Um, so as we wrap up, where can we, where can we, our listeners find you on social media? Where, where do you want, where you want to, where you want them to find you? Okay, cool. Before I jump into that, Lewis, I want to commend you for what you're doing. This is hard work, man. What you're Thanks, doing man. is a grind. I, I've thought about podcasts. This is work, man. Yeah. Keep shining. You're an inspiration. Not just to me, but a lot of a lot of people listening, a lot of creatives. You're doing it, bro. I appreciate you're it. You're doing it full time. You're you're chasing what you love. Your story, you know what I'm saying? Like you come from it. It wasn't an easy journey. So I commend you. I'm praying for you. I'm proud of you. This is super dope. And I'm humbled to be here, to have this conversation with you. Straight up and down six o'clock. I am very happy to be here. So thank you for having me on. Appreciate it, brother. Yes, my guy. And moving forward, Will Fairbanks, Will underscore Fairbanks on all social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat. It's all the same. Will underscore Fairbanks. If you want to check out Torp and the stuff that we're working on, I put it on my personal page. But then also we have our own solo page. It's called Torp Pros. It's T-R-O. No, T-O-R. Sweet Jesus. T-O-R-P-R-O-S. Tor Pros underscore. Let me let me triple let me triple check that. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That's what it is. Tor Pros underscore. Check us out. Um, we got a lot of stuff coming tomorrow. A lot of people like to say 2021. Like, nah, bro, tomorrow isn't promised. But what we got right now, we got a lot of stuff coming ASAP. Stat pronto. I'm working every day. Um, I'm praying for y'all. Like I say, pray for me. I believe in all of y'all. If you have a dream, go get it. Don't stop. I don't care what the world tells you. The world's going to hate on you. The world's going to tell you to stop. The world's going to tell you that you're not capable. It's a lie. You are. Go for it. I believe in you. Pray for me as I'm praying for you. And go be great. And there you have it, folks. Uh, Another episode of the Creative Block Podcast. Stay tuned for our closing thoughts. Will, thank you. Yes, sir. Definitely looking forward to having you again in the future. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Thank you.